Okay, I'm going to do some examples using the formulas for the sum of arithmetic series and geometric series. The first example here is uh, find the sum of the first 20 positive integers ending in 3. That is a series and we need to figure out is it arithmetic or geometric and then how do I find that sum. So first of all, positive integers ending in 3. So, if I look at positive integers ending in 3, the first positive number ending in 3 is 3. Um, the next one, 13, the next one, 23, and so on, um, until I hit the 20th one, and I need to figure out what is the 20th one, to find the sum. Now, first of all, what type of series is this? Um, so let's look at how do I get from here to here? I add 10. How do I get from here to here? I add 10. What would be the next one? 33. I add 10. So, the formula for the series itself I need to figure out first so that I can find the 20th term. So remember the formula for finding um, a series, an equation for the series. I have to find use the first term, t1, which is 3. I have to use the d, or the adder, which we said was 10 in this case. And I have to plug those into this formula. t sub n equals t1 plus n minus 1 times d. So I have 3 plus n minus 1 times 10. 3 plus 10n minus 10. 10n plus, nope, 10n minus 7 is the formula. All right, so how do I find that 20th term? I find t20. So 10n 10 times 20 is 200 minus 7 is 193. So, there's what the first 20 positive integers look like that uh, end in 3. So now that I know um, the first term and the 20th term, I can find the sum of all of those terms without actually listing all 20 terms and doing old-fashioned arithmetic. So, the sum of 20 terms is equal to um, the number of terms, which is 20, times the first term plus the last term, divided by 2. And now I have to figure that out. 3 plus 193 is 196 times 10. 1960. Okay, now I have an example of a geometric uh, series, um, and I want you to find the sum of that one. All right, uh, let me put some notes here. This is the arithmetic one, and this is the geometric one, just so that uh, we can keep track. So I'm told that this is a geometric sequence or series. So I need to find the sum of it, and here's the formula for the sum. I need some information. I need T1, and I need R, and I need R to the N. Okay, so I have to figure that stuff out before I can use the formula. T1 in this sequence means to find the first term. So if I find the first term, I take negative 1 half, to the first power, and what do I get? Negative one half. All right. Let's find to find the r. I need to have a couple terms so that I can find the r. So let's find the second term. All right. That means change that to a two. So negative one half squared is one half times one half, positive one fourth. Let's find the third. A half times a half times a half. It's going to be negative one eighth. The fourth positive 1 16, and so on. How do I find the tenth term? Right, I put that to the tenth, negative 1 half to the tenth. Now, big problem. If you plug that into your calculator, it goes into decimal mode, 
and you know I don't like that. So you're going to have to do it separately, the top and the bottom. So negative 1 to the 10th is positive 1 or negative 1. Hope you said positive. All right. And then 2 to the 10th. Do you know what that is? It's 1024. Okay. So, do I know T1? Yeah, negative 1 half. Do I know um, the R in this case? What is the multiplier to get from here to here? If you don't know it, there's a little equation to use. Negative 1 half times R equals 1 fourth. And then solve this. Multiply both sides by negative 2, and you get R equals negative 1 half. Let's test it. What's 1 fourth times negative 1 half? Negative 1 eighth. What's negative 1 eighth times negative 1 half? Positive 1 sixteenth. So I know my R is correct, so it's negative 1 half. Now when you're doing geometric, the T1 and the R are not always the same. It just happens that in this problem they are. Now R to the N means R to the tenth, because my N is my top number there, so when I did r to the 10th, remember I got this answer here? So that's 1 over 1024. So I have all the pieces. All I have to do is put them in the formula. Remember, this is the formula I'm using. So let's plug them in. So I have negative 1 half times 1 minus 1 over 1024 all over 1 minus negative 1 half. That's my r. All right, let's simplify this. The bottom's easier, so we'll start there. That's 3 halves. Do you agree with that? 1 plus a half. You know why it's plus. Okay, let's leave this negative 1 half on the top temporarily. How do I figure this out? Well, let's make this a fraction. Now this fraction could be 1 over 1, or 2 over 2, or 10 over 10. What do you think my choice should be? I hope you said 1024 over 1024 minus 1 over 1024. Simplify that a little bit. Um, and to do that, I'm going to simplify this part first. Negative a half divided by 3 halves ends up being negative a half times two thirds, which ends up being negative one third, times the answer to this. 1024 minus one is 1023 over 1024. And again, I can simplify this by dividing three into that number, and I get negative 341 over 1024. And, uh, there you go for the answer. Sorry I went out of the picture on you. But um, hopefully that will help you use these formulas in the homework if you were getting stuck on the things. Good luck with the rest of the problems. And remember, um, no decimals, so keep things in fraction form. So when you're squaring or cubing, do top and bottom separately. All right, that's it.